Hey everyone, it's Bernie over at the Woolly Bee. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. Today we will be making a circular top or sweater if you like, with sleeves or without. The choice will be yours. I will leave a detailed list of tools and materials needed in the description box below, so please do check that out. Then grab your hooks and desired yarn and then let's do this. You will need to take a few measurements before we start and I apologize in advance because I am no sketch artist which you will find out very soon but let me try to show you what I mean. Let me just move these out of the way. Okay, so um, you'll need to take measurements for where you want your head to fit through because this is a circular top that we'll be making and we'll be making two of those panels. Uh, <laughs> imagine uh, that these are the edges of your shoulders. So you will need to measure to get the diameter size for your circle. You'll need to measure the edges of your shoulders and that is the size circle that you're going to need to make. Um, other than that, you'll need to take measurements for where you want your arms to go through. So you need to measure that, that section there. Um, and then also you need to measure for your neckline uh, because we'll be sewing from the neckline to the edge of the shoulder on both sides this way and this way then we will be sewing down we'll leave the arm opening and then we'll be sewing down the edge from the arm opening down to the bottom there and there and you need to determine how much uh, you want to leave open for the bottom section but those are all the measurements you're going to need let's pretend this is me <laughs> and let's make up our two circular panels we will be adding sleeves you can uh, omit that step if you want and then yeah Let's go ahead, grab our hooks and yarn, and then let's quickly start with our project. So with my 5mm hook and my DK weight yarn, I'm going to be make, starting with a magic ring. I'm going to start with a stack single crochet to make my first double crochet. You are free to uh, start your project either with a chain 2 or chain 3 or even a standing double crochet if that is your preference. Um, this is just how I like to start. I'm going to chain 1, do another double crochet, chain 1 and I'm going to do this until I have a total of 10 double crochet followed by 10 uh, chain spaces. Two, four, six, eight, nine, and 10. Last chain space. Cinch up your circle and join to your beginning with a slip stitch two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten I'm going to chain one and do my single crochet in the same space again stack another one on top and that will be my first double crochet of this round now this next round will be an increase round so we're going to be placing two double crochet into every double crochet of the previous round and two double crochet into every chain space two 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 in the chain space Two in the next stitch so continue in this fashion until we meet again at the beginning I'm at the end of my round don't forget to place your last two double crochet into your last chain space 
join to the beginning with a slip stitch. You should have a total of 40 stitches at this stage. I'm going to chain one and a single crochet back into the beginning, follow that with a stack single crochet on top and this will be our chain round once again. So I'm going to chain one, skip one, double crochet into the next stitch, chain one, skip one, double crochet into the next stitch, chain one, skip one, double crochet into the next. So follow this sequence until the end of the round and I'll meet you once again at the beginning. I've finished off my round with my chain one. I'm skipping the last stitch and I'm joining to my beginning with a slip stitch. Chaining one, single crocheting on top, stacking another one on there for my first double crochet of my next solid round. And uh, because we started with an increase in our first stitch in the previous solid round, on this one we're not going to do the increase there, we will be moving the increase. So one double crochet followed by an increase in the next chain space, one double crochet in the next stitch, an increase in the next chain space, one double crochet into the next stitch, an increase into the next chain space. Follow the sequence to the end of the round and I'll meet you once again at the beginning. I'm at the end of my round and if you're following correctly with me, you should have the chain space left, which is where we need to still place an increase. So place your last two double crochet in there, join to your beginning, I'm slip, uh, sorry, sing, uh, single crochet, stack another one on top, and this will be our chain round. So chain one, skip one, and chain into the next, uh, sorry, double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, double crochet into the next. Chain one, skip one, double crochet into the next. Do this row. Uh, sorry, this round uh, finished. I'll meet you once again at the beginning where we will start our next increase round. So I'm at the end of my round. I've chained one. I have one last stitch left to skip and I'm joining with a slip stitch to the beginning. Chaining up one, single crocheting back in there and stacking another one on top for the beginning of my next solid round. Now once again this will be an increase round and because we started our increase one stitch away from the beginning here we will now start our increase at the beginning. This is in order to keep this joining line as straight as possible so every solid row going forward we will alternate the start of that beginning be it with one double crochet or then an increase. So for this one we're going to place an increase in that first stitch and we'll follow that by with two double crochet. So one and two to an increase, two double crochet in the same stitch followed by two double crochet over two stitches, another increase followed by two double crochet over two stitches, another increase, and this will be the repeat sequence for this round. So go ahead with that until we meet again at the beginning, and you should end, because you started on an increase, you should end with two double crochet over two stitches at the end here, but I will meet you once we get here again. So I'm at the end of my solid round. I have two stitches left. I've done my last increase for this round and I'm placing my last two single, uh, sorry, two double crochet over the last two stitches and joining with the slip stitch to the beginning. So now this next round will be a chain round. Go ahead and do your chain round and I'll meet you up again for our next solid increase round. So I finished up my chain round and I'm going to start the next solid increase round with you guys and remember we started the previous round with an increase so this round we will start on only the one double crochet at the beginning and we're going to do one, 
two, three double crochet this time, and then follow that with an increase. So one, two, three double crochet, your increase, one, two, three double crochet, and then an increase, and that is the repeat sequence for this round. So go ahead and do that. We'll meet up again at the beginning. So I'm at the end of my round. And because we didn't start with an increase at the beginning, we are ending with an increase in this last chain space. So do your two double crochet, join to the beginning, and start your next chain space round. Now I'm going to leave you here because you will have noticed that the sequence to follow is very easy. Once you've finished your next uh, chain space round, your next increase round will start on an increase followed by four double crochet, an increase and four double crochet. You will then do another chain space round and the next round you will alternate your beginning and start with five double crochet followed by an increase and that's how you're going to keep alternating in order to keep your join um, as straight as possible um, so that we can hardly notice it I don't think it's too noticeable um, but that's how you'll alternate the start of every solid increase round because you will increase in each and every round in order to grow your circle to the size specifications that you need so once you've done your two circles we will come back and we will then join our shoulders leave our openings for our armholes and then join the bottom of the two circle your sorry circular panels as well so go ahead finish up your two circles come back a little bit later and then we will join and add some sleeves if you want and that will be the completion of your sweater so see you guys soon I'm back guys so I've had to make two separate smaller panels in order to fit everything in on the camera um, so once you have your circles to size what you want to do is um, I've not ended off anything because I want to line up the join to the join on the other panel so you want to flip them over to face each other uh, right side facing each other because we're going to be sewing up our panels and we want to make sure that the two joins line up and now you need to determine whether you want your join <coughs> excuse me to be uh, down the bottom somewhere leading towards the shoulder turn your circle whichever way and then start your uh, joining process now i'm going to keep my joins uh, facing downwards so heading towards the buttock area and i'm going to start with uh, pinning my neckline so whatever your measurements are you would have yours now this is just the sample piece so I don't have measurements as such I'm just showing you where to sort of pin um, this is the neckline area that I'm pinning and now I'm going to pin because we won't be sewing over here but we will be sewing from the neck to the edge of the shoulder like we discussed in the beginning so you need to mark an area for that this is the area that we'll be sewing that will be your shoulder section then you need to leave an opening for your armhole for the arm to go through however large you want that space to be um, or also you can take measurements for however wide you want your sleeve circumference to be so I'm gonna just leave open that area that will be my armhole so I won't be sewing there I'm just gonna mark the other side as well shoulder width sort of that and then armhole and then also you have to determine how far down you want to close up your uh, sweater or top to so let's get a few more markers and I'm just going to sew down to here 
and then mark the same on the other side now all you would need to do is count your stitches uh, once you've marked one side of your uh, panels then you just count the stitches in between and then mark the same on the other side and that is just how we will sew it up so you will either uh, via crocheting or sewing up your panels however you wish to do it I do like to uh, uh, crochet mine with a slip stitch so I'm just going to turn my panel um, and I'm going to start working on one side and follow through working all the way around cutting off the yarn at each and every opening and then continuing to sew or well crochet in the same direction so I'm just going to grab some yarn I'm using a smaller hook and I'm starting at the one bottom section and I'll be grabbing the stitch uh, the loop facing away from me on this front panel and then I'll be grabbing the loop facing me on the back panel and I'm simply going to slip stitch And I will now simply slip stitch in that manner, loop on this side, loop on that side, slip stitching together. I'm heading from the buttock area up towards the first armhole section. And once I reach that first marker, that is where I will tie off, snip off my yarn. Then I will reattach yarn to work from the shoulder section over to the neck. You are just grabbing the stitches corresponding, um, so one on this side and one on the opposite side. And that is as far as I'm going to go for this sample piece. happening just snipping off my yarn tying off that end and that will be uh, from the bottom upwards towards the arm we're going to leave this section open that will be the armhole section and I'm going to join the yarn here once again in order to work towards the shoulder keeping everything going in the same direction I'm just joining you can remove the marker and in the same manner grabbing the loop on the front panel facing away from you and then grabbing the loop on the other panel that's facing you and then just slip stitching now if you wish to sew that is completely uh, up to you you can do so nothing keeping you from doing that Just removing my marker and placing my last stitch and then I'm going to slip the yarn because on this sample piece I've now done the edge of my shoulder and I've reached the neckline where the head goes through I've got my arm hole and I'm heading over towards the other side of the shoulder section still going in the same direction still working uh, to the left of my panels joining my yarn I'm removing my marker just for ease to work with and slip stitching in the same manner just grabbing two loops one on this side one on the other side and slip stitching I 
So I'm just going to finish up this side and go and work down the other panel from the armhole down to the buttock section and then I'll meet up with you. We'll flip it over so that you can see what the seams look like and then we will join in some yarn to attach and make some sleeves. So I have sewn up all of my pieces. These are my armholes. This is my neckline. So I'm just going to flip everything inside out and show you what the seams look like. Sorry. And then we will attach yarn. We will make up some sleeves. You don't have to make sleeves. This top is quite lovely without sleeves even. And if you were to use cotton yarn, you could make this as a summer top and it is gorgeous to wear. This is what our seams look like uh, on the sides, the shoulder section, our neckline. Okay, so uh, don't mind all of the ends. We'll weave them away soon enough. I'm simply going to get some yarn again to make our sleeves. And for our first armhole, you want to just uh, join your yarn on the joining stitch, that slip stitch or whatever stitch it is that you made there. I'm simply going to join again with a slip stitch. I'm going to chain one and I am going to do my normal stack single crochet. And because we ended our round on uh, the solid section, we are now going to do a chain section. So we'll chain one, we'll skip this uh, little uh, sewn in section that almost looks like a stitch and we'll head over to that next stitch. And we'll place our first double crochet there, chain one, skip a stitch, double crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, double crochet, Go around your armhole section in this manner, skipping a stitch every time because we're doing the chain uh, around. We are at the shoulder join. We are skipping this sewn in section. It's not a stitch, but we're going to count it as one. And we're heading over to the next join. And I'm simply going to grab uh, two of these loops just for strength and durability. Skipping the next one. You just need to place your stitches as best you can. Um, if you find that you don't have enough stitches to skip a stitch when you come to the end, then uh, just don't skip that stitch. Just uh, join your work as you normally would because it's under the arm and it won't be noticeable. So don't be afraid of anything. Skipping my last stitch. yarn hates me. <laughs> Chaining up one, I've reached my uh, first stitch. I have this section as my last skipped stitch and I'm simply going to join to the beginning and then follow through as per our usual pattern. There will be no increases however because this is just the form forming of the sleeve. So you're just going to work your double crochet into every double crochet and one double crochet into every chain space all the way around for as long as you need your, your sleeve to be. I'm going to do a few rounds of the pattern. The next round will be the chain round. Round. The following round will be a solid double crochet round. So I'm just going to do this for a few rounds and I'll come back to you to show you what the sleeve looks like. So yeah guys that is what the little sleeve should look like on your uh, circular two panels after you've attached everything. This is if you want to add the sleeve. You will go for as long or as short a sleeve as you want. Um, I'm going to be attaching the other one soon and you'll see my uh, mint green. I'm going to go back to the mint green and finish up that one for myself for our winter that's upcoming. 
um, and then do hit the notification bell if you want to make the uh, circular cardigan um, using the same pattern stitch and the same circular panel for the back of the cardigan we're going to simply split the front circle in two half pieces to complete a cardigan and then I will show you how to attach that and make the sleeves for that one as well so please do come along again and um, yeah thank you for spending this afternoon with me thank you so much guys bye bye